with my young wife and my friend Prasad, a Hindu friend of mine who explained the Hindu worldview to me, I saw myself up on that rooftop, and I had to make a note that the 60s weren't all bad. I realized what it was like to go from being a rigid spirit to a free spirit. And then, the, you know, we keep hearing people say, oh, the hippies ruined America. Not so fast. I will tell you exactly what happened. It wasn't the hippies who ruined America. It was the communists who ruined the hippies who ruined America. The very same viruses who are destroying this country today are those who penetrated the free spirits of that time. And the reason it happened, and I observed this, and I thought it was one of my best observations of all time, is that a free spirit is more easily manipulated or penetrated than a rigid spirit. You see, the 60s were not all bad. It enabled millions of us, including many of my listeners, to become free of spirits. The communists entered our spirits just as retroviruses infect humans, causing the common cold and AIDS, for example. And today we have a retrovirus in the White House named Barack Obama. He has infected the body politic with his hateful, anti-American views and invaded many other cells or people with his nation-destructive ideas. A retrovirus is a very, very fascinating organism. It's a virus that uses RNA, ribonucleic acid, as its genetic material. Now, most of our cells are made up of DNA. And when a retrovirus infects a cell, it makes a DNA copy of its own genome. And then, and then it inserts itself, itself into the DNA of the host cell that it invaded. And it starts to trick the cell that it invaded into thinking that that's what it is. And it causes diseases such as some forms of cancer, AIDS, common cold. So what is a retrovirus? It's a type of virus that has RNA instead of DNA as its genetic material. And it uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to become part of the cells that it invades, becoming like the cell it invaded. And this then allows many copies of the virus to be made in the host cells. Does that sound like what Obama has done to this country? That's exactly what he's done. The entire Democrat Party has been invaded and infected by him. Not all of them were like this originally. Not all of them were like this even seven years ago. Some of them had a scintilla of patriotism and a scintilla of sanity. Today, the entire Democrat Party has been invaded by the retrovirus called Barack Obama, who has infected them with his worldview that is so crazy, they don't even know what they're doing because they are just like him now. They yak and yak and yak and repeat what he tells them to say to the detriment of the United States. And, of course, the same goes for a good portion of the Republican Party. It goes for 99% of the press corps, 99, maybe more percent, are also infected by the retrovirus of liberalism or communism, whichever way you want to put it. But, again, I don't want you to lose the theme of my show today because it's not about bashing the retrovirus in the White House. It's too boring to do. Frankly, he's beneath contempt at this point. I don't even want to talk about him. So let me go back to what I was saying and ask you a question. I was watching home movies from the 60s. And I saw how much I had changed when I left New York in 1968 and moved to Hawaii to work for a graduate degree in pharmacology. It was a time of change in America. The anti-war movement was raging while the war in Vietnam was burning on. I was glad to have left all the hatred of the mainland USA and to discover and develop and free my inner self. And as I said to you, the first disc ended with me and my young wife dancing on the rooftop of a research hospital in Honolulu with my Hindu friend Prasad. Looking at the ocean and the eternal horizon in the background represented our new freedom and our new lives. But the 60s are the issue. They were not all bad. It enabled millions of us to become free of spirits. But here is the problem. A free spirit is more easily infected or invaded than a rigid spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And now I want to open it up to the audience because I'm going to go on with this theme in a minute. And I'm going to ask you, are you a former hippie who became a conservative and when did you become a conservative and why? What was the moment that opened your eyes to where you were going? You see, the fundamental problem is that many people of the 60s thought that they were free spirits, and they were. They were free spirits, and many of them got stuck. They became like animals that fell into a pit, a tar pit, and they became frozen in time, espousing 60s philosophy to this minute. To this very minute, stuck repeating the same mantras of the 1960s that were put in their heads by the communists of the 1930s who were running the hippie movement of the 1960s. They never evolved. They don't even understand that they have destroyed their own lives in their own country. They have not been able to evolve. And there are millions of people like that. They're all over Hollywood. 
otherwise intelligent people stuck in the past, unable to move on, unable to evolve, unable to see what they are doing to this country, taking their marching orders primarily from Barack Obama. That's how evil and dangerous this retrovirus in the White House is. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. A president is a very powerful man. Powerful not only in what he can do politically, but what he can do mentally. And what this man is doing mentally to America and the world is beyond comprehension. I don't have to list the details. I've done so in one book after another. I don't have to tell you about the insanity of this retrovirus granting the most terroristic state on the uh, nation on the planet, Iran, the right to develop nuclear weapons. It would be like going into an inner city like Baltimore after they burned the city down, and instead of saying, we're going to put you all in jail, instead of doing that, giving them all RPGs and tanks, and then saying they're not going to do any more harm when we give them the RPGs and tanks because they mean well. That's what Obama is doing. Now, you have to say, is he crazy? Is the man out of his mind? Or does he know what he's doing? Is he a secret agent of Iran? Has uh, Iran Is Iran the country that put him in power to begin with? Is Iran that powerful? Do they run this, this thing of ours called our government media complex so much so that we don't even know it? How would we know how deeply this goes? I'm not that good a novelist. I didn't write The Manchurian Candidate. Richard Condon did one of the greatest novelists of our time. He wrote some other great movies, uh, uh, some great novels, rather. And one of his best novels was something with a mountain in it. And it was about a man, if I recall, who leads an anti, uh, leads a prohibition movement in the 1920s. He's a criminal, a gangster, a member of organized crime. And he sets up a hysteria in America against the dangers uh, of alcohol. And he's one of the leaders of the Prohibition Movement. He stirs up the Christians, and he gets the Christian ladies screaming against alcohol. And before long, uh, the Volstead Act is passed, and alcohol is banned. And he then makes a fortune in organized crime by selling alcohol illegally because the prices go through the roof. That was also writ written by Richard Condon. And it reminds me very, very much of what games are being played in our country today. Well, I've gone on a little while today on hippies and how the hippie movement was uh, uh, hijacked by the communists. And I happen to know, I know very well, that the reason my audience is different, and you hear it in some of the calls sometimes, is because I have an awful lot of former liberals who awakened to what they were, what they are, what they were doing, and became rather conservative, patriotic, however you want to put it, because they realize what's happening to the country. I have a tremendous audience of people who are politically, they think, on the other side of the aisle, but there's something in my voice, in my delivery, uh, my memories, dreams, and reflections, if you want to put it that way, that resonates with them. And they like me, but they don't like my politics, but they listen anyway. They don't understand where they are politically. They don't understand what happened to them. They don't understand how antiquated their philosophies are. They don't understand how destructive a liberalism actually is. They don't understand it. They truly don't understand it. And so I ask you, were you a hippie in the 60s, or I would say 60s, early 70s, who became conservative? When did you become somewhat conservative? I don't even like the word conservative, by the way. I've always rebelled against the word conservative myself. I don't consider myself a conservative, incidentally, at all. I don't like the term. I think it's used in, in all the wrong ways. I wouldn't even define myself as that. I would say I'm still a free spirit, and I don't want the government telling me what to do, and I don't want you telling me what to do, and I don't want Black Lives Matter telling me what to do, and I don't want anyone telling me what to do or what to think. How's that? Does that work for you? Try to define that. I'll be right back. Savage. American prophet Bob Dylan, one of the greatest poets of, of all time, frankly, a great musician and a prophet. I don't know who wrote the lyrics. I think that's his song. But nevertheless, boy, was that prophetic. And so now we're dealing with a retrovirus in the White House. And I explain what a retrovirus is, but I didn't finish my discussion of this invader and what it does. It, once it invades a healthy cell through a kind of enzyme, 
that tricks the cell, an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. It starts to produce DNA from, from its own RNA and it reverses the usual pattern of cell replication. And then the new DNA is incorporated into the host cell. And the host cell that, were, that has been invaded does not even know it's been invaded. And it starts to act like the, uh, like the invader. And here's the bad news about Obama and what he's done to this country and the world. It is very difficult to detect the virus until it has infected the host. But at that point, the infection will persist indefinitely. It's hard to believe, but he's so clever. I don't know what the enzyme is that he used, the equivalent of reverse transcriptase, but he has it. Obama has the equivalent of reverse transcriptase in his abilities. And he's invaded. Cells didn't even know they were being invaded. And now they're actually mimicking his perverted worldview. So many of you think that this can be reversed easily. But this infection that Obama has injected into the body politic may persist indefinitely, and you may have to learn to live with it. You may have to learn to live with an infected political system. He has destroyed it possibly forever. I know many of you think that you can turn it around. Good, keep thinking it, keep working for it. God bless you. But I know a little bit about immunology, and I know a little bit about politics, and when you combine my knowledge of immunology with politics, it's uh, prognosis pretty poor. Old Doc Savage says prognosis is pretty poor, and the evidence is, uh, is pretty clear. It's evidence by the Boehner-McConnell infection. The, I mean, they've been infected, haven't they? Haven't most Republicans been infected by Obama's uh, retrovirus? Hasn't he infected them, injected them with his political insanities? Now he wants to bring into this country at least 10,000, maybe 100,000 Muslims from Syria with no vetting? If this is not insanity and impeachable, tell me what is. Immediate impeachable. I don't want to hear about voting anymore. What does that mean? He knows how to manipulate the votes. But an impeachment hearing, although would not succeed, would expose the retrovirus for what he is. And it would stop the spread of the virus. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. Savage.